Hello, welcome back. The title of this lesson is called Solving a Linear System of Equations by Graphing. This is part one. I want to give you the big, big picture before we go any farther. In the last lesson, we learned what a system of equations is that are linear equations, which means we have two lines that if there is a solution, they cross somewhere. And the solution is the point at which they cross because that's the only point where both of the lines are in common. So when we say where we're trying to solve a system, we're just trying to find the point or points that are common to both equations. That is what it means to solve the system. Where is the intersection point that's common to both? Or that makes both of them true at the same time, right? So if the lines cross, that's going to be the intersection point. Now in this lesson, and that's going to be the solution, in this lesson, we're going to solve these systems by just graphing them and then seeing if they intersect and where they cross. But in future lessons, we're going to learn how to solve these systems without graphing. And we have a system called a, a solution method called a uh, substitution. And then we have a solution method called elimination. So just like different flavors, you know, different flavors of, uh, you know, whatever, popcorn. Some people like cheesy popcorn. Some people like salty popcorn. Some people like sweet popcorn, okay? But it's all popcorn. Here we're learning systems of equations. Here we're going to learn how to solve it by, by graphing. Then we'll learn how to solve it by substitution. Then we'll learn how to solve it by elimination. But we're still eating popcorn. We're still solving the system of equations. Just different ways of doing it. So for our first set of, our first system is the, are the two lines, y is equal to negative 2x and y is equal to x plus 3. Now you can graph these lines any way you want to. For the first problem, I'm going to graph it using an input-output table. We'll connect the, the dots and draw the line. And for the follow-on problems, we won't use the input-output table. We'll just graph it using the y-intercept and the slope, which is a lot faster. So let's start off with our first problem. Here's our first line. We want to choose some input numbers for x and calculate the outputs. You can choose any numbers you want for x, literally anything. You can even put fractions here if you want, or decimals. Here I'm going to choose the number zero, uh, negative 1 for x, and then 0 for x, and then 1 for x. And we're going to take each one of these three and we're going to put them in here. Now I'm choosing three points. We're going to find three points for each line. I think that's a good number. You can choose more points if you want. Um, but three points is nice because if, if the line goes through all three points, then, and it forms a line, then you know you've probably done the math correctly. So if I put negative 1 in here, it's negative 2 times x, which would be negative 1. Negative 2 times negative 1 is going to be a positive 2, so the output would be a positive 2. But if I put an x value of 0 in here, then of course times negative 2 is again going to give me 0. What if I put a positive 1 in here? Negative 2 times positive 1 is negative 2. So here's the input-output table for the first line. I'm going to plot these points, x comma y, x comma y, uh, and draw a line. But before we do that, let's go on to the second equation of a line. Again, I can choose what I want to. I can put negative 5 here if I want to. I'm going to choose negative 1, 0, and positive 1. They're just nice, easy numbers. If I put negative 1 in for x, then negative 1 plus a positive 3 is going to give me a positive 2. If I put a 0 in, plus 3 is going to give me a 3. And if I put a 1 in, 1 plus 3 is 4. So you can always graph things with input-output tables. That's kind of the bottom line here. Let's take a look at the first one. The first line that we have is negative 1 comma a y value of 2. So our first point from our first line is negative 1 comma positive 2. That means we go over to the left, negative 1 and up 2 for a point that is basically right here at that intersection point. The next point is 0 comma 0, that's right at the origin, right where everything intersects down here. And then 1, positive 1 comma negative 2, positive 1 for x, negative 2 for y is right here. And you can see that these three lines do indeed form, or these three dots I should say, do indeed form a line. Actually I think what I'm going to do, yeah let's just draw it right now. Uh, let's just draw it right now. I was going to wait and draw both lines at the same time, but let's just draw it right now. So here is line number one. And I do recommend using a straight edge of some kind to draw your lines because basically what we're going to do is try to figure out where these lines cross. And if the lines are crooked or don't look great, then it's going to be tough. So here we have for line number two, the first point is the same as this point. It's just a coincidence. Negative one comma two. Negative one comma two is exactly the same point. Zero comma three here. Uh, zero comma three means zero. And then we go up one, two, three. So there's point number two here, and then one comma four is one comma one, two, three, four right here. So the first point is this, the second point is this, the third point is this. I think you can kind of see where we're going with this. 
and kind of like what the punchline of this is going to be, but I'll go ahead and draw the lines anyway. And what you see is an intersection point right here. You can just see that the lines cross right at that point. All right, what is that point? If you look at this, that point is negative one, comma, and then positive one, positive two. So the intersection point is negative one, comma, two is the solution. So I want you to think about this from the big picture point of view when we learn how to solve regular equations. If I give you an equation, like y is equal to two plus, or let's say two plus three is equal to x, right? Regular old equation, you solve for x, you're just getting a value for x. But when you have a system of equations, you don't just get a single value for x, you get an x and a y number and they form a coordinate pair, but it's still a single point. Now these lines crossed at one point and so there's gonna be one solution. Most lines, they're gonna randomly cross somewhere and that's gonna be the solution. The only time you're really not gonna have a, a, a solution at all is if the lines are totally parallel and they never cross. Even if they go on forever to infinity, they never cross if they're parallel. And in that case, we say there is no solution. But here, what you do is you circle the solution is the point x comma y. So whereas when we solve a regular equation, we're just looking for a number, when we solve a system of equations, we're looking for an x, y point. So the solution itself is actually the point one comma two. And again, the reason this is a solution is because the point one com negative one comma two is the only point in this entire grid that at the same time satisfies both lines at the same time. And when I say satisfies it, I mean that this point is true for both lines because this point lies on both lines. You can see this point is in the tables actually uh, here. But even if we chose different, different, uh, like if we didn't choose negative one here, we wouldn't see this point in the table, but we would still see the intersection point being in the same, in the same place there. All right, now for the follow on problems, we're not gonna do an input output table anymore um, because even though it's very nice to do that and learn about it, it is not the fastest way to graph equations. So let's take a look at problem number two. How about y is equal to two x minus four? And the next equation, I'll just, I guess I'll write it over here. Y is equal to x minus two. You can graph them in any order you wish. And so let's just graph, uh, let's just graph this one first. What is the y intercept of this guy? The y intercept of this guy is negative two because it's x, you can think of it as plus a negative two. So there's the y intercept. What is the slope? The slope is whatever is in front of x because you remember all lines have the form mx plus b. The y-intercept is negative two. The slope is whatever is in front of x, but there's an invisible one there, so the slope is one. When you get a slope of one, that means a rise of one and also a run of one. So all we have to do is figure out where the y-intercept is here. It's at negative two, so we put a dot there, and then we go a uh, slope of one is up one over one, and you do it one more time, up one over one, and there we have three nice points, and it's gonna be easy to draw a line through those three points. So, I don't know where this line is gonna cross the other one, or if it even is gonna cross at all, so I'm just gonna draw a nice long line through the whole thing, and hopefully I'll catch the intersection point for the other line. All right, so what is, for the other line, what is the, for this line here, what is the y-intercept? Well, the y-intercept is negative four right here, and the slope is whatever's in front of x, which is two, which is a rise of two and a run of one. That's what a slope of two is. So we go to the y-intercept of negative four, which is right here, right above negative five, so negative one, negative two, negative three, negative four, and the slope is two. That means we go up two and then over one, and then up two and then over one, which is right here, actually, right on top of that. And so then I can draw a line through these points. So there's a point, there's a point, and there's a point, and I think you can all see where the intersection is going to actually be, right? And so we have the two lines right here, and the intersection point is right here. That's where the lines cross. That is the only point in this entire plane that is present in the red line and at the purple line at the same time because this point is true and satisfies both of these lines at the same time, so it is what we call the solution. So the solution of this, the solution is equal to the point. And what is this point? It is an x of one and a y value of zero because it actually lies on the axis. Actually, not an x point of one, sorry, one, two. It's an x point of two there. So two comma zero, two for x, and zero for y, so there is the solution. 
all right? So you can see how straight lines are gonna help you a great deal here. Let's take a look at our third one here. And the first line is gonna be one half x minus three. And the second line is gonna be negative x plus three. So you can graph whatever you want, whatever order. Here, the y-intercept is the negative three, which is over here, and the slope, which is one half, is whatever is in front of x, rise over run. So let's go and take a look at this. The y-intercept is negative three, that means I go negative one, negative two, negative three, put a big fat dot right there. Rise of one, run of two, from here. Up one, over two, that means my next dot is here. Up one, over two, my next dot, again, is right here. So, I grab my straight edge. I don't know where the crossing point is gonna be or even if it is gonna cross the other line, so I'm just going to draw a nice straight line, nice long line through all three of these points. And there is my line for, for the first equation that we have. All right, let me just double check my work so far. All right, now what about the second line here? What is the y-intercept? It's a positive three right here. And the slope is whatever's in front of x, there's a negative sign here, which means the slope is negative one, which is a rise of negative one and a run of one. That's how we think about it. Y-intercept is at three, one, two, three, right here. And we go, see, since it's a negative, we rise down one and go over one. Down one over one. And then from here, down one over one, and now I have enough points to draw a nice, pretty line through all of them. All right, so let me line this up through here, and I'm gonna draw a nice line through there. Now you can tell that my graphing is not perfect because if you look carefully, you can tell that the point is right here at this intersection, but because my line was not actually perfectly through exactly the crossing of all these, it looks like it's a little bit higher. But this point right here is the point right at th that intersection point is the solution. It's X is one, two, three, four, and y goes down, so that's negative one. And this is the solution. So you circle this, four comma negative one. That's the solution. Again, this is the point. It looks like it's not quite right. It looks like it's a little low. That's because my red line and my uh, purple line are just not perfectly, like you can see that that purple line is a little bit higher than it should be. I should have tilted it down. It would have gone right through that guy. And we do have one more problem, but I do want to share with you that this is the reason why we learn how to solve these systems by graphing but in real life we don't usually solve them by graphing because the graph is only gonna give you a solution as perfect as your lines are drawn. And we can never draw perfect lines, none of us can. Like even with graph paper, you can't draw it perfectly, all right? So graphing is great, it's good graphical to help you understand what you're doing, but it's never gonna give you super accurate, super amazing precision, okay? So we learn it, but really in real life we learn the other techniques we're gonna learn later to actually solve these guys. So the solution of this is four comma negative one. I'm gonna erase this. We do have one more problem and we will wrap it up and call this lesson completed. All right, here is our last problem. The first equation is x plus five. Y is equal to x plus five. Second equation is y is equal to x minus one. All right, so let's take a look. What is the y-intercept of this first guy? That's gonna be five because the five sitting over here. The slope is whatever's sitting in front of the x, which is an invisible one, so the slope is one, which is a rise over run, one over one. All right, now over here, we have, what do we have? The y-intercept is negative one, because it's sitting here, and the slope, again, is one, because that's what's in front of x, one over one. So let's graph these guys and see what we have. So with a y-intercept of five, that means uh, the y-intercept is right here up at positive five, and the slope is one, up one over one. Here's the next point, up one over one, there is the next point. All right, and I think what I'm gonna do is put my next points up before I draw my lines. What is the y-intercept here? The y-intercept here is negative one, that's way down here, and the slope again is, is one, so it's rise over run, one over one here. Rise one, run one, like this. So let's draw these as good as we can. It's not gonna be perfect, but that's okay. We're, we're not after perfection. We're just after trying to get an idea of what's going on here uh, as cleanly as we can. So we'll draw this guy, something like that. And that goes through all three of these points. So there is a line goes on and on forever to infinity in both directions. And then 
we're going to draw this one, which I think you can probably see what's going to happen. Let's see if I can get it lined up exactly. All right, something like that. Let's take a look at this. Draw this guy right here. All right, where is the intersection point of these two lines? Ah, I messed up my line when I pulled the thing off. You get the idea. It goes like this. Where is the intersection point of these two lines? Well, there is no intersection point. This line, this green one, is going to go on and on forever to infinity to the end of the universe along this direction. And this purple one is going to go on and on forever to the end of the universe, never stopping along this direction. But these two lines will never ever cross. Now from our graph in this tiny little window we're looking at, it looks like they never cross. But mathematically, you know that they're never going to cross. Why? Because this guy has a slope of 1. That means rise over run. Up and over is always up and over, up and over, 1 over 1. But the slope of this one is exactly the same thing. Up and over, 1, 1, 1, 1. So because the slope of this is 1 and the slope of this is 1, you know they have to be parallel because the slope is telling you how tilted the line is. If both lines are tilted, and they're not on top of each other, but they're tilted the exact same angle, the same direction, then they can never cross. Because this line and this line are always going to be going rise over run, 1 over 1, same direction, forever. The only actual difference between these is the y-intercept. So the slope is the same, but the y-intercept is different. The y-intercept is up at 5, and the y-intercept here is down at negative 1. y-intercept up at 5, y-intercept at negative 1. But from those starting points, the slope means that since they're the same, they will never cross. So what you say is that there is no solution. And no solution happens when the two lines have the same slope. So even if you don't graph it, you know that they're going to be no solution. Um, if they have the same slope. So that's something to look for. But even if you forget, just graph them and you'll see that they're parallel. Another way of saying this is you know that two lines are parallel if the slopes are the same. It doesn't matter the y-intercept, that just tells you how up and down it crosses the y-axis. But if the slopes are the same, even if you shift these guys up and down, they're never going to cross. They're going to be parallel. So here we've learned how to solve systems of equations by graphing. And in the first problem, the way we solved it, is we didn't do slope and y-intercept, we just did an input-output table. And you can do that for any problem. But it's a little tedious and cumbersome to make these table of values for every single problem. But you can certainly do it, and you can find the intersection point. Most of the time, if we're graphing stuff, we just find the slope and the y-intercept, graph it really quickly. In this case, we had an intersection point. Slope and the y-intercept, graph it quickly, and we can see we don't always have an intersection point. In that case, we don't have a solution. So when two lines are in a system, they're either going to cross and have one solution, or they're going to basically be parallel and separated, and they're going to have, um, you know, no solution at all. Now, there is a kind of a special case where if the two lines go like this, but instead of being separated, the two lines lie on top of each other, like literally they become the same exact set of points, then because they're on top of each other like that, you can say they have infinite solutions. In other words, all of the points for line number one are also also on the all, all the same points that are also on line number two. That's kind of a special case, but it is it is something you run into. If you end up with two equations that have exactly the same the same points, like forever, then we say it has infinite solutions. We're not going to get into that in this lesson, but I just wanted to point it out to you. Solve these yourself. Follow me on part two. We'll get a little more practice with solving a linear system of equations with graphing.